Good morning. I'm Chuck Hutchins with Reed Yacht Sales. I'm from the LaSalle Group out in Michigan. And today we're on the picturesque Allegheny and we're going to uh, fall layup for the 31 LE Edition Tug. Uh, we're going to begin with just kind of showing you what we need for this actual process. There's a lot of debris for it, so please bear with me. Uh, we start out, you're going to need all your filters. These are the primaries and secondaries for the main engine. Uh, we're also going to do the generator later, so we'll show you those in a separate clip. But one, one thing I like to mention right up front is these are the oil filters. There's two on this engine. They are different numbers. They can only go on one part of that index. So make sure when you get your filters that there are two different part numbers on it. Okay. This is the secondary filter for the engine fuel. I'll show you how to prime that later. But uh, this is the one that goes mounts on the engine. And there's another one here that mounts on the bulkhead. Okay. This filter is just another one just in case. Okay, on this side, you're going to see that we've got lots of miscellaneous. I've got a decent oil change pump, a spare diesel fuel, gloves, rags, some place to put your waste oil, and several different oil filter wrenches because we have different filters of different sizes. So with that being said, I think we're ready to open her up. Uh, we've already heated up the engine, so they're nice and warm. They're up to operating temperature. So we should be able to pull the oil out of there in short order. Okay, here we are. We've got the engine hatch open, and we've got good access to everything. This is actually one of the simpler engines to do. So don't hesitate to try it on your own. Uh, you really can't hurt anything. So with that being said, I'm going to show you how to make the connection to the engine to pull the oil out. And we'll just go ahead and begin. So I'm, I'm going to need to get down in there with her. Just be careful where you're stepping. Try not to step on anything like the air conditioning pump or anything like that. And I don't know if you can see it, Mike, but I'm going to pull the cap off of the oil change line. And that's the rubber cap. It exposes a brass nipple in there. Save that. You will need it at the end. Now I'm going to install the oil change pump onto the fitting. You'll see it slips right on there. I've already pre-checked the hose size. That's pretty much it for that. Now you'll see that this is going to draw right out of the engine and right into my bucket. I secured that hose because if that comes out of there, that's a nasty mess. Uh, and the key to any oil change is to try to keep it clean and try to uh, keep the oil in the containers. I've spilled in my life and I don't like to spill. I'm just going to hook this up to a 12 volt source. I found one over here by the engine. You can hook it up to the batteries. I've got all this mess in the way, but I could have easily just hooked it right onto the batteries. But I see a, a power source down here. I'm going to hook it up. So just kind of bear with me a second. Okay, I've got the connection made. Let's see if it works. That sounds about right to me. Uh, this pump is reversible, so make sure you're pointing in the direction you're going. And I'm going to go ahead and start pulling the oil out. Let's see how fast it comes out of there. This engine has capacity, I believe it was just a little over three gallons of oil. So when we're all done, we should show about three gallons in that bucket. Okay, I'm gonna don some gloves here because we're gonna start playing with the actual oil. You can see that the oil is, uh, the oil changer is spitting right now. What I normally do is leave it running as I pull the line off and have a rag ready to catch any loose oil coming out. All right, we've got all the oil out. It only took about maybe five minutes and it looks about the right capacity in our jug, uh, somewhere around three gallons. I'm gonna put the cap back on the fitting so we don't forget that. These, uh, I probably have already told you about the dipstick uh, that it has to be clipped into place. Uh, just make sure that that cap goes on there too because it could spit oil all over your engine, uh, your uh, bilge. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the oil filters. And these are spin-off filters. Just move that out of there. 
Okay, I've taken one of the oil absorbers and it's stuck down here just in case I have a little minor spill as I'm coming up with the filters. Grab some rags, always have some handy. And we're going to use the filter wrench to break her loose. That one's loose. Okay, I should be able to spin those off by hand now. Now, as you pull these off, it's very important to keep track of the gaskets here. Uh, sometimes these will come off the filters and stay on the housing. And you could make a mistake of double gasketing a filter. So just keep an eye on that. And you, as you can see, the oil stayed in the engine, not in the filter. So it didn't leave a, a mess everywhere. This one's going to run a little bit. That's why we got the rags there. All right, we've got the two main oil filters off. Check, making sure that the gasket did not stay in place. Now we're going to go ahead and grab the new ones. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can see the two different sizes of the holes in the filters, so they only go on one way. Okay. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of oil around that seal, just to lubricate the seal. Just hand tight. You don't need a filter wrench for this application. There you go. Okay, one thing I'd like to do after I've made a, the oil filter change is to label the filter so the, the owner can easily identify when the last oil change was done. And you don't need to put the whole date on it, but I usually just mark them. Like today is the 10th month, and this is 19. And I always do the, you know who did it that time. Okay. Just a real quick reference for everybody down the road. So, you know, if you're just trying to keep track of when you had your oil change last, it's there. Okay. I added one more thing to our debris field here. Uh, some simple green. It's very good for cleaning up oil spills. So far we've been lucky, we haven't had one, but uh, <laughs> best be prepared, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get the engine opened up and put some oil back in her. Like I said, about three gallons. Um, all right, pain, be nice. This, is, this engine's still under warranty, so we're gonna use the Volvo Penta oil. It's a 15W40, and we just pour it right in. Okay, I'm gonna hold it three there. Thank you. And what I'm going to do now is we're just going to check the stick. It's just a precaution that's so you don't overfill. Wouldn't be a very big deal if we did because we could pull a little bit more back out. But it's just the way I do things. We're just above the full mark. I'm going to go ahead and put the last little bit in for the filters. I'm 
I'm sure everybody knows it, but the oil jugs do have a little sight glass on the back side of it. At this point, the oil's the oil is changed, and before we start it, we might as well just go ahead and get to the fuel filters. We've moved over now. We've got the oil in the engine. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the fuel filters released. Um, this is the primary. The secondary is here. Okay. The secondary has a, a sensor on the bottom of it that's wired to the engine that senses water, and we have to release that first. Um, it's going to be a little difficult for me to show you that, but I'll show you what it looks like after the fact. Okay. Okay. Now we got that. That was a little, a little bit of an awkward position. This is the hairpin clip that holds that mechanism together. Um, it is the, for the sensor, so don't lose track of that. I use the troughs and these things. This is the plug, if you can see it here. It plugs directly into the uh, bottom of the filter. It is indexed, so you can only put it on one way. You can't get your filter wrench on until that's removed. Okay. Same oil filter wrench we used prior. Get right up to the, close to the top there. They're usually pretty snug. Okay. I think we've got it. Got my little bucket. I moved my oil absorber down to the bilge here. This is just some place to catch the filter. Okay, one of the other things I love I like to do is whenever I change a fuel filter, again keeping track of the gasket. Dump it into a bucket. And I'm looking for sediments, I'm looking for water, I'm looking for anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, water will give you a defined line in there if you see it. This is very, very clear. We have to make sure we get that sensor off the bottom of this and install it on a new filter. It just screws right off. There is an O-ring in there, just make sure it's still in place. I usually fill the fuel filters first before I install them. It just makes the priming process a little quicker. Sensor's on, picked up my funnel, and we're gonna pour a little diesel fuel in here. Oops. Okay, I'm going to lubricate the gasket just like we did the oil filter. I've got a little clean oil right here. So the filter's full. Lubricate the, the gasket just like you would the oil filter. Okay. And we're going to spin that back on. Before I get it too tight, I'm going to go ahead and re reinstall the clip so I can get it on before it gets into an odd orientation. All right, we got that on, and before we start the priming process, we're going to do the primary on the side of the bulkhead here. This one's a little easier. No clips to release. We're just going to pull the element right out of the basket here. Okay, notice how the gasket's coming out of the housing already. Take that off and discard it. There's another O-ring on this T-handle that has to be discarded. The filter has a little handle on it. Get your bucket ready. Yeah, it's doing its job. 
Okay. These come in different microns, so if you're some down, somewhere down the line, you start to pick up algae, you can open up the amount of microns, or uh, if you want to get a cleaner fuel tank or fuel, you can uh, put a larger one. Uh, this one's a 30 micron filter. It just slides right in there. Okay. Again, I'm going to add a little diesel fuel to it. Now, this, co this package comes with the new gasket and a new O-ring. I'm just making sure that the O-ring goes in nice and flat, mm -hmm. no twists. Okay. Get my little O-ring for the knob or handle. Let's go ahead and install that. See why I don't ever wear gloves. Back in. and tight. Okay, fuel filters are changed. Now I'm going to need just one of my smaller wrenches. Ah, this one will work. And we're going to open up this fuel bleeder. Bucket. And we're just going to start priming. Nice stream of fuel coming out. Close down your primer. Done. Okay, at this point the engine's ready to run. All right, looks like we're all set here. We've got the fuel system primed. We've got everything cleaned up. I'm just gonna mark that fuel filter the same date that we did the others, and we'll be ready to fire the engine. Let's look at the oil pressure. Pop that stick out and see where we are. <clears throat> I'm probably going to add one more quart to that. Just let that sit for a little while and we'll decide whether we want it after it sets. That's it for the main for right now. We're going to move over and start on the generator.